quickly as you can, correctly as you can, but remember that you have three lifelines. You have three passes which you can use at any point during the game. I would recommend trying to hang on to them towards the end of the game. If you can keep them for questions 18, 19 and 20, then you are guaranteed a share of the 50 euro prize pool. Here are things to watch out for. Sometimes people get kicked out of the game because they press the wrong button. They're going for the correct button on their phone or their, their device, their laptop, a tablet, whatever you're using to take part in the quiz, and they just press ever so slightly the wrong thing. We call that fat finger syndrome. Another thing that happens is people get timed out. They're so busy thinking about what the answer could be that they're not pressing the button in time. So don't let that happen to you. And then the third thing that commonly happens to, to people is they just don't have a stable oh internet God. connection Try and again. they are kicked out of the event because their internet just says no. So try and make sure that you're close to a strong and stable broadband or otherwise connection. Hello to Velocity Girl. Uh, the stream isn't loading for me, says Trivia and Pro. Well, I hope you can sort that out because um, you're you're missing a lot. Can anyone see me? So saying uh, Trivia Emperor says, uh, I can't see her. I'm sorry you can't. As long as you can hear me and see the game, then, then you're fine. You don't really need to see me or indeed hear me in order to take part today. All you need to do is to be able to see the questions when they come up in one minute and four seconds time. So I think I've covered all the basics. The other thing to point out is that the prize will get won. The 50 euros will disappear at the end of the quiz. It doesn't get, doesn't get rolled over. It will be given away. Sometimes it's given away to just one person, in which case, fantastic, you'll win 50 euros. Sometimes it's shared by several. It depends on how many people get through to the final stage of the game. We could get all the way to question 20. Or we may finish early if everybody gets out on the same question at the end. We'll wait and see. I've been looking at the questions to remind myself what we put together for today's quiz, and I think it's fairly easy. I don't think it's particularly challenging. There may be a couple where you may want to use your pass, particularly towards the end of the game. So do hang on to those passes if you can. Nick Perry says it's the second largest quizando quiz in history. Well, Nick, we've got seven seconds. Maybe we'll get some more people. Nick says, congrats for that. Well, thank you very much. It helps that it's free. Hello again, everyone. We're now ready to start the quiz. And uh, we have 126 players ready to answer the 20 questions that I have for you, all multiple choice answers. You pick the answer that you think matches the question. Try not to press the wrong button. That sometimes happens to people. Try not to get timed out. Occasionally when we're running our 8.30 quiz on Mondays, people get timed out and they mean to press, but they just run out of time. And if you fail to press, if you press the wrong button and it turns out that you press the wrong thing, get the answer wrong, you are out of the game immediately. Any missteps, you are gone. But you do have three lifelines. You have three passes. And I suggest trying to hold on to those as long as you can, because the longer you hang on to them, the more likely you are to have full set of passes to see you through in the later stages of the game. We have 50 euros to give away. We decided to make the first of these Friday afternoon quizzes free to enter. So I hope you're, you enjoy this and you decide to come back next week when it will be five tokens to enter. And you buy the tokens from Quizando and then use them to take part in all of their fantastic quizzes. So do, when, when you've finished taking part in this quiz, have a look on Quizando's website and see what else is available. I'm going to be here on Mondays at 8.30 BST and Fridays at 1 p.m. BST for the foreseeable future. But there are lots of other hosts using excellent questions to give money away to lots and lots of people. Bifecta says you can use your winnings to buy tokens. Well, if you win 50 euros, that will buy you access to a lot of quizzes. 
We're going to start the quiz in just a second. I'm just having a look at the chat. Do say hello in the chat. It does help me to remember that I'm not just talking to myself in a webcam and there are other people there and they, they can hear me in most cases see me I can I can see from the chat that not everybody's able to see me I'm sorry about that um you're missing much as long as you can see the questions and take part then you are fine let's start with the first question I'm just glancing over to my other screen to remind myself what it is I think you need to be of a certain age to know this one let's see What product did Mr. Cadbury's Parrot advertise in the 1990s? Was it chocolate, cars, cold remedy, or beer? Don't forget to press. Maybe use a pass if you're not sure. Let's see what the stats say as they appear on my screen in just a moment. The correct answer is chocolate. Mr. Cadbury's Parrot says, hello, in the adverts from the 1990s. I am old enough to remember that vividly. The stats sometimes take a little while to arrive. Here they are, carrier pigeon bringing the stats attached to its leg and they tell me that 81 players got knocked out on that question. I suspect looking at the stats that that was because they either forgot to press or pressed the wrong thing or maybe had an internet issue. We have 45 players through to the next question. Two of you needed to use a pass to get through to that question. So that's a tremendous number of people who got knocked out and I'm really sorry to lose you all. You are very welcome to stay and watch the rest of the quiz. Just because you've been knocked out doesn't mean you need to leave the game. You can stick around, say hello to us in the chat, just watch, see who wins, and whether there's going to be a single winner or a prize shared by several people. E. Parker says probably they didn't make it into the room. Yes, I, I suspect that's the case. Uh, so I reckon probably had a fair number of people who, who said they were going to turn up, but forgot for whatever reason. Let's move on to the next question. Trivia Emperor's put a YouTube link in the in the chat there. Not sure what that's about. Not going to visit it, Trivia Emperor. So maybe if it's important, tell us in the chat what it's all about. Here comes the next question. In April 2011, Catherine Middleton became the Duchess of where? Windsor, Cambridge, Wessex or Lancaster, which was Catherine Middleton's title. In 2011, in April 2011, after her marriage, of course, she became the Duchess of Cambridge. How did you do on this one? The stats are coming through as we speak, and they tell me that 42 players have made it through that unscathed. Three of you needed a pass to see you safely through that. Could be that the same two people have used passes for both the, the questions one and two. I have to wait and see if you're brave enough to tell us in the chat about your pass situation, then do. Some people like to keep the number of passes they have close to their chest. Three people got knocked out. That's the King of Keens, JWC and Laithley, I think that says, but my eyesight is appalling. So please forgive me if I'm misreading your team, your, your player name. 42 players then through and each of you still in with a chance at winning that 50 euro prize or share thereof. Nick Perry says, is this a British quiz, Leslie? Well, I'm British. We do occasionally have the odd British question, uh, but it's meant to be a question that appeals to the people who've been coming to our events recently and who take part in our regular weekly Friday email quiz, which we've been sending out for the last all oh, decade or so. But as I said at the start, and I'll just reiterate for the benefit of those who joined late, please let us know at quiz 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 on Twitter or by email, hello at quizquizquiz.com, or in the chat here if you have any comments about the content, because we want to make this quiz for the people who come along to it. So if you tell me that you need questions that are not Anglo-centric, then we'll take that into account. Here comes the next question. Oh, Velocity Girl says Friday quiz email was particularly good this week. Thank you. I shall pass that on to David, who puts that together. Here comes the next question. What nickname is given to the Royal Air Force aerobatic team? Is it MI6, SAS, Red Arrows, or the Dan Busters? Which of those fits the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, their nickname? The answer is the Red Arrows. I've been lucky enough to see them in action. Let's see what the stats reveal about your knowledge of the Red Arrows. 41 players through, 
one got knocked out that was e parker e parker there doesn't seem to be a wrong answer having been pressed so you either got timed out or your internet kicked you out of the room i'm sorry about that three people used passes to get through on that one possibly the two or three people here who are not from the uk and don't know much about the red arrows let's see in the chat whether people are telling us about that and Nick Perry says, you should tell before that you need to live in England to play. You don't need to live in England to play at all, Nick. Um, but make sure you come back next Friday and we'll see what questions we have for you then. Here comes the next question. Which word precedes cars and pavements on massive UK hits of the 2000s? Is it smashing, driving, chasing or constructing? Which of those is the correct answer there? Cars and pavements, which word comes before that? Mm. It is chasing, chasing cars, that big hit for Snow Patrol, and chasing pavements, huge song for Adele for early releases. We had six people using their passes to get through on that one. Two got knocked out. That was Wes and Rohit 161091. That means that we have 39 players still going through and 16 questions left. We're starting very slowly to whittle people down when we're excited to know whether one person is going to win that very decent 50 euro prize, which was very decently donated to this quiz by Quizando, or whether it's going to be split between several people. Let's see what happens as we go into the next question. Which American state consists of only of islands with no part of it on the US mainland? Is it Hawaii, Rhode Island, New York, or Texas? Don't forget to press. Time's up and the correct answer is Hawaii. Let's see how you did there on this one. I'm hoping nobody got booted out on that question. We have one person using a pass to see them through on there. One got knocked out, that was Nick Perrow. That wasn't even a British question, Nick. As I'm sorry to see you go. I hope you come back next time to see what we have for you. Only five tokens to play next Friday's quiz. 38 players then through to the next question. And 15 questions left to go. Here comes the next one. Whom does the Hollywood star Anne Hathaway share her name with? Bob's uncle, Shakespeare's wife, Darwin's finch, or Henry's cat? Which is the correct answer? Time's up. Here comes the correct answer, which is Shakespeare's wife, Anne Hathaway, sharing her name with Anne Hathaway. And the stats coming through now reveal that all 38 people still with us. Nobody got knocked out, but two needed to use passes. So passes are starting to be deployed tactically during the quiz. If you're not sure about the answer, that is the way to go so that you can protect your position in the game and not get booted out. Just take a look in the chat and we have Trivia Emperor saying, I hope this finishes in time. Mm, I hope so too. Let's go on to the next question. We've only got 14 questions left to go. I think we're going to do really well on this one. Here we go. According to the title of the 2007 movie starring Daniel Day-Lewis, what will there be? Is it death, chaos, blood or pain? There will be what? Answer coming up is blood. There will be blood. And let's see the stats, what they reveal about who is in and who is out. We have Kemic leaving the quiz. Very sorry to lose Kemic. One person using a pass. Uh, Kemic put pain. There will be pain. Not the correct answer. So 37 players through to the next question and 13 questions left to go. Here we go. What kind of animal is a Suffolk punch? Pig, dog, goat, or horse? How is your livestock knowledge? The correct answer coming up in just a moment, and it is a horse. A Suffolk punch is a horse. We used to run a pub quiz at a pub called the Old Suffolk Punch very, very, very long time ago. The correct answer then, horse, and 34 of you got that. 10 of you needed a pass in order to achieve that one. But three people got knocked out. We've got Nat285, Danny Kelly, and G Law all saying goodbye at this stage. But please feel free to stick around, watch the rest of the quiz, and contribute in the chat. I'm gonna crack on now with the next question. We've got 12 questions left to go. 
What comes next in this sequence of square numbers? 169, 144, 121, and then what? What comes next in the sequence? Square numbers. Correct answer is 100. Of course, that is 10 square of 10, and the others were 11, 12, and 13. We've got 32 people going through. Five of you needed a pass for that. Two got knocked out. We're saying goodbye to Trivia Emperor. I, was that because you used all your passes earlier on, Trivia Emperor? And also Avneef saying goodbye at this stage in the game. Trivia Emperor and Avni, do stick around for the chat. Very welcome to stay for the rest of the quiz and see what happens. And that way you've got a good feel for what's going to take place when you come back next week and pay just five tokens to play this game. Let's move on to the next question. Which Welsh band provided the entertainment at Wayne Rooney's wedding? Was it Feeder, Robbie and the Savages, the Stereophonics, or the Manic Street Preachers? The correct answer is the Stereophonics. How many of you got that one? Stats are just coming through, and I can see that 32 players still with us in the game. 15 of you needed a pass to get that one. We are in the middle stage of the game now. We're starting to ramp up the difficulty slightly. There will be some questions in there that might trip you up. So if you've got some passes, that will prove useful. 15 of you used a pass for that one. Nobody left us on that question. Let's move on to the next one. 10 questions left, halfway through the game. How many people are going to share that 50 euro prize? Here it comes. What do the letters R and A stand for in the name of the world's oldest golf club? Is it Royal and Ancient, Right and August or August, Rock and Attitude or Regular and Artful? The correct answer is Royal and Ancient. How many of you got through on that one? Did we lose anyone? No, we didn't. Didn't lose anyone on that question. All 32 players through, but two of you needed a pass to see you through on that one. Excellent royal and ancient golf knowledge there being displayed throughout the quiz. Ed K says spud face singers. Is that the stereophonics you're referring to? Let's go on with the next question. We've got nine to go. Originally meaning cooked in Hindi, what is now slang for good or genuine? Is it vindaloo, blighty, khaki or pucker? Which of those is now slang for good or genuine? Let's have a look at the correct answer, which is pucker, and find out how people have done on that question. Stats are telling me that all 32 players are through, but three of you needed a pass for that one. It's feeling like passes are being deployed by different people, because we have had quite a few passes being used at different stages in the quiz. A couple of people, maybe Trivia Emperor, being out because they used all of their passes, but all 32 players from the last question still with us at this stage in the game. We have eight questions left, and we're going to move on in just a second. I uh, should tell you that the other options of blighty means foreign or European in Urdu, loosely and translated. Vindaloo is a Portuguese, um, a Portuguese corruption, shall I say, of um, uh, vindalo, which means wine and garlic sauce, and khaki means dust coloured in Hindi. So if you were thinking about any of the other options, that's what they all mean. Here comes the next one. Which of these is a word spelled correctly apart from being backwards? And I shan't attempt to read any of those. Which of them is spelled correctly apart from being backwards? The correct answer is Nunep, which is penguin. And the other one, uh, number two is almost whale. Number three is almost dolphin. And number four, almost octopus. Three of you panicked and needed a pass for that one. Six got knocked out. That's Chop 77, Savages, Grossel 882 comes to our Monday quizzes. GU1DO, Scott Woodthorpe, whom we've seen before, and Stephanie 13. Very sorry to lose you, especially when you've come so far through in the game at this stage. We've only got seven questions left. Was that because you were overconfident about a wrong answer or did you have no passes left? Steve Cox said, didn't quite understand. Oops. Never mind, Steve. Come back next week. Try again. Let's move on to the next question. 
Who had a the longest reign as England's monarch of these options? Is it Henry VIII, Charles I, George VI, or William I? Who had the longest of these monarchs reign as England's monarch? The correct answer is Henry VIII, who was on the throne from 1509 to 1547. So what's that? Uh, 36 years. Charles I was only on the throne from 1625 to 1647. And we've got William I, who was 1066 to 1086, and George VI, who was about 16 years from 1936 to 1952. Now let's have a look at the chat and see whether anyone's contributing information about their monarchical knowledge of the monarchs of England. 18 of you needed a pass for that one. I suppose that is a panic trying to work out the, the reigns and their duration quite quickly there. 26 of you through and nobody got knocked out on that question. So 26 players going through to the next question. And we have six questions left. It's starting to feel like the prize is going to be split by a few of you, but let's see how you get on with the next few questions. That does sometimes take you by surprise. Sometimes at this stage, I'm thinking, of course, it's gonna be shared by several people. And then a couple of questions will trip people up, it's starting to run low on passes, and you may surprise me. I just want everyone to win. Steve Coff says, Henry VIII, my A-level and mine and my entire degree almost. I uh, should know more about him, frankly. Spent two years studying Henry VIII and the equivalent period in France at A-level and rather a lot of time at university doing almost the same thing. Let's move on to the next question before somebody starts asking me questions I can't answer about Henry VIII. Best known today for its tomato ketchup. What was the very first Heinz product to be sold in 1869? Horseradish, dill pickle, mayonnaise, or mustard? I suspect passes will be used here if there are any remaining. Horseradish is the correct answer. And let's see how you made a, how you worked out with this one. We have 20 players going through. That means that six got knocked out. Seven of the 20 people going through to the next question had to use a pass to get through on that one. The people who got knocked out, two of you put dill pickle, three put mayonnaise and one put mustard. And we're saying goodbye to Urban Sombrero, who is a regular at our Monday 8.30 BST quizzes. Ed K, Kellyan, Pointy, Dean Elwinger and Flan. You made it so far into the quiz. There are only five questions left. Um, you just fell before the very, very last stretch. Velocity Girl says, I'm from Hastings and I went to school in Battle. So we did a lot on 1066. And you would do, is it, Velocity Girl, was it the 14th or the 15th of October 1066? I can never remember. Let's move on to the next question. She's going to tell me it was the 16th now. Which book of the Bible tells the story of Noah and the flood? Was it Genesis, Exodus, Kings or Noah? Which book of the Bible? Do you need a pass for this one? How is your biblical knowledge? Correct answer is Genesis. And the stats are just coming through. Carrier pigeons bringing them attached to its leg. And I can see that 17 of you knew that the correct answer was Genesis. Three put Exodus and therefore got knocked out. One person used a pass. We're losing Wow Bagger, one of our regulars, is 10 m another semi-regular, and Dougal Maguire. I'm very sorry to lose you, Father Dougal. Let's move on to the next question. We've got four questions left. Velocity Girl says 1066 was on 14th of October. Aha, I thought so. Good. My historical knowledge hasn't entirely left me. Does that mean that Stamford Bridge would have been a couple of days before? Anyway, I shall look it up later and try to remember. I'm supposed to know this stuff. I did it for my degree, but that was a million years ago. Let's move on to the next one. Which of these words comes last in alphabetical order? Genetic, genuine, genius, or genesis? Which is last in alphabetical order? The correct answer coming up in one second. I hope you didn't get timed out. Maybe some people use the pass for this one. The answer is genuine. And I'm genuinely interested to see whether we lost anyone on that one. We lost nobody. Nobody used to pass. You all very rapidly managed to work out, all 17 of you, which of those was the last in alphabetical order. Very well done. So amongst the people still with us, and I can't see all of them, I'm afraid, on my screen, but we have Scotty, Quack Attack 3, SAB6888, El Sapel, hmm, come on, uh, Sapel 2. We have, what am I talking about? That's not right at all. 
Um, X Machina and Retzaf, my eyesight's so bad. Chris M, Lewis T, and Steve Kov. So congratulations to you for making it through to this stage of the game. And I'm now having flashbacks of learning French at school, which again, I did till A-level, so I would be able to speak French properly. I just can't do it in a panic. Let's move on to the next question. What is the name of the little boy in Raymond Briggs, the snowman? Is it James, Simon, Thomas, or Williams? Which is the name of the little boy in Raymond Briggs, the snowman? I suspect if you have a pass, now might be a good time to use it. The correct answer is James. How many of you knew that straight off? How many of you just had to take a guess? We had 17 players in the last question. All 17 of you still in the game and only one pass being used. I thought that was going to need a few more passes. So you've taken me by surprise there. We have just two questions left. We've still got 50 euros in the prize pot. 17 of you still to play. And I'm just reminding myself what the next question is. If you have any passes, you're going to be very happy right now because <laughs> Velocity Girl says ruh -roh. It's very many. I wouldn't have known the answer to the next question, but that's my, my gaps in my general knowledge, which there are many. I may know little bits about 1066, but I do not know very much about. In which city did the first competitive action of the 2012 Summer Olympics take place? Cardiff, Manchester, Coventry or London? I've looked it up. I know about it now. But I would not have known about this had I been answering this question right now. The correct answer is Cardiff. It was women's football, GB versus New Zealand. Let's see how many of you got that. We had eight players using a pass. 11 of you through, six got knocked out. So we're saying bye to six of you. 11 going through, one question remaining. Are all 11 of you going to share that 50 euro prize or will we lose a few more on the next question? Let's see. If we lose all of you, then you all still win. That's how that works. So the prize never vanishes into the ether, never rolls over, it always gets won. One question remaining, very exciting. How many of you are going to share in that 50 euro prize? Will one person emerge victorious and be the only one left and the only one correctly to answer this question? Good luck, everyone, says Velocity Girl. Good luck, everyone, says me, Leslie. And here comes the final question in the inaugural Quiz, 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 Friday Quiz Goes Live Quiz. And we'll be back here at 1 p.m. BST next Friday with a very, very similar quiz. So if you enjoyed this one, come back for more. And again, do tell us at Quiz 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 on Twitter or on any of the usual channels how you found this one and whether you'd like us to change anything for next time. Here we go. Good luck. Which of these calculations gives the lowest number? Is it 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6, 9 times 6, 7 times 7, or 100 minus 49? Which of those gives the lowest result? The correct answer is 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6, which gives 40. And let's see how many of you got through. We have eight to be through, three got knocked out. Three of the eight winners used a pass to do that. So congratulations for hanging on to your passes for long enough to help you to win the quiz. Nine by six is 54 and seven times seven is 49 and 100 takeaway 49 is 51. But you knew that, you all won. Congratulations to the winners. Very well done to Scotty, Quack Attack 3, SAB6888, Lewis T, Steve Kov, um, Miguel Hutch 9, Don Ho 30, and Munners. Very well done to you. You each won six euros and 25 cents from the 50 euro prize pool. Please do come back next time. We have 8.30 BST on Mondays. We have 1 p.m. BST on Fridays. The Monday one costs 20 tokens to join. The Friday one costs five tokens to join. Please, again, let us know by the usual social media channels or by emailing hello at quizquizquiz.com how you found this quiz. Thank you very much. See you again on Monday or Friday very, very soon, I hope. Take care, everyone. Bye.